Last week on BizTech, we had a visit to a digital electronic shop where we got to know how digital electronics work. This week on BizTech, we visited a digital TV station, but we also learned how digital TV station works. I'm your host, Magdalene Wanjiro. My name is Kevin Munika. I'm a technical guy. Uh, and today I'm going to pass you through different equipments that we use in our digital studio. Uh, to start with, I'll start with an LED light. This light allows you to do different things on it, as in you can adjust the light and you can be able to use a remote on it, either wirelessly or, or when you connect a cable on this port here. You, it, it allows an input of 230 to 240 AC volts, then it allows also an output of 14.8 volts. The most advantages of this light is that uh, it uses less consumption of power and also it allows you, using the different filters, this allows you to give different textures and colors. In this light, we have uses different filters like this ones. These filters are used to get different temperatures and different complexion of the set. And it also has filters that allows us to get a reflection of the light. As you can see, these are the filters. You plug them here so that you may get uh, the reflection from the direction that you want. Apart from this, we have uh, another small LED light that also has different filters, which has magnetic in it in, in order for them to be held here. This light is all the same to like this one, only that it is small, and it also allows you to use a battery, an alkaline battery, a, a type. It's also adjustable, like the one we have seen, the bigger one. It also allows an AC input and a DC output. It's normally used on DSLR cameras, and also our JVC HM150 cameras, we use these ones. Now, for our audios, we use different types of mics. For an example, this is a dynamic lapel mic, and this is a condenser lapel mic. The difference between the two is that, uh, from the looks, this one, the dynamic mic is bigger than the condenser mic. Then, technically, this condenser mic needs to be powered for it to work. Uh, and, and, and compared to dynamic mic that, that doesn't need to be powered. Then we also have bigger ones, which are good recommended for field. This is also a dynamic mic. It's uh, an AKG D230, and this is a Behringer ECM800. This is also a condenser mic, and this is a dynamic mic. These ones are mostly recommended for field while these ones are recommended for studios. In the field, we use a, a transmitter. This is a body pack transmitter that uses battery, the alkaline ones, and this is an antenna for it to transmit. It allows an input of a mic, uh, a, a mini XLR input mic pin. You just plug it here, then you are able to transmit your signal to this receiver that allows two channel inputs, as in you can use the two transmitter from two different guys to transmit to this receiver. This receiver allows an input of two. Then it also gives out an input of two different channels. This receiver has a switch, an on and off button here. Then this is a port for power when you, have, you want to put in. This is a mic output and this is also a mark output. Then in our studios inside Indoors, we use a talkback system that connects the producer from the production side and the guys, the, the camera guy or the director in the live set. This talkback has different inputs. It's, it allows an input of a mic, which is in combination with the headset. It also has a, a knob for adjustment of the volume. You can be able to call the guy in the production side using this talkback system. Then it also allows an output of uh, an XLR pin 
an audio output to the production side. We also use a GSM phone, this, like this one, this is a GSM P1004 Mac. It allows an input of a, a AC current, which is this, a, a, and DC, and also uses batteries, and alkaline batteries, you can also use on this. This phone allows only one SIM card. You plug here your SIM card, and it also has different features, like this one is an antenna to receive the signal from the caller or when you are calling out. It has a dialing pad around here, and this is a, a, a dial button and a hang-up button. It also allows you to rest restore some of the numbers in your phone. It, you can also recall the, 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 the calls that you have made earlier. You can also redial any number that you want. This is a, a knob for adjustment of the volume. Maybe you're not getting the, the clear audio of the, the caller or when you're calling out. You can also change your gain, both the input gain and the output gain of this phone. You change them using this knob. This is changing the gain of an input, and this is the changing the gain of an out output. These are the two LED lights. The green one indicates that you are calling somebody, and the red one indicates when you are hanging up. It has an on and off button here, and then this phone also allows one line input, which is here, and one mic input, and a, head, uh, a line output. Then this is a headphone jack, jack pinpoint. And when you are using a mic, you, sh you are able to change when you are using a mic or a line on this same phone. You just change this knob here. When you are using a line, you change to this position. When you are using a mic, you change to the other position. This is an analog to SDI converter. It's from Data Vision. It allows two RCA inputs of an audio. It also allows an S video input. It allows a component signal input, then it produces out an SDI signal. It also allows an input of XLR audios. And also, when you are using this component, you should be able to change the mode you are using. Like for an example, when you are using an S video, you have to make sure that your channel one is on on, off, and off button. Like I told you earlier, this LED light is used on the camera. The cameras we use here in studio are digital cameras, like this one is a JVC HM 150. For you to be able to use your light on this camera, you just plug it here, on this point here, then you, 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 you screw it, and then you'll be able to light, to adjust the light from the other side. This Camera is digital in a way that you use we use uh, SD cards, and and compared to the tape ones, this these are the ports that allows to uh, SD input ports. This camera gives out different quality of the video. Like it gives it allows a component video out. It also gives out an uh, a composite output this heavy out this is the port of the composite and this is the port for the component it also allows you to get an output of a hdmi signal from this port here this camera also uh, allows two audio input channels this is channel 2 and this is channel 1 of different from different mics and these channels are configured from this point here like you can see the configuration of the input of channel 2 and the input of the channel 1. For you to be able to use, it depends with the feed. If you have fed your mic on channel 1, you use this connection here to set either channel 1 or 2. The most advantages, the advantage of this camera is that you can be able to power your mic depending on the mic that you are using. Let's say for an example you are using a condenser mic. You can be able to power that mic from this this, this camera here, by switching your mic line to this mic condenser, like plus 45 volts, you will be able to power your, 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 your mic. The, advantage, the, the other advantage of this camera is that you can also operate it using a, a remote control, either wirelessly or wired remote. 
For our set and chroma king, we use a green set, uh, a green screen and a blue screen. We use green screen or blue screen because we don't have uh, green or blue pigments in the human body and it's also easy to chroma using the green screen. In our studio also we use curtains, like you can see, these are the curtains we use. They are heavy, heavy because to be able to absorb audio. And the reason why we, we, we make them this type and this texture is that we, we, we able, we, so that we can be able to get the best quality of the audio from, from the echo sound. And uh, it also does prevent light from the production side as, uh, side, side, as you can see we prevent light from the other side from entering into our studios here. From the camera and the mics, our audio and video cables run all the way to this patch panel, this is a 32 uh, channel patch, patch panel, which we use different connectors like BNC and uh, XLR for audios and BNC for video. Uh, as we connect them from this point, this point connects the, the, the video and audio cable from the live studio to the production studio. And these are the talkback system cables all the way from the studio to the production side. From the live studio, our audio and, si and video signal comes direct to our production side. Like our audio comes to our uh, audio mixing console, which is here. These are the two. The, the four input audios that we, we have from the, the live studio. Then our talkback system from the live studio comes direct to our intercom in the production side, uh, which is a, an eight channel intercom system from data video. This system is able to control the other talkback from the live studio and it's also able to allow you to communicate to the side, to the production, to the live studio with the guy who is doing the production. From the live studio, our video signal come all the way to our production system, which is at Alcaster 40, using the BNC connectors. This system allows four video inputs and uh, one balanced audio input. It also has two video outputs, uh, the component outputs and the composite output. It also allows a HDMI output. This is the control surface of our production system, which is a TriCaster 40, and this is the virtual control surface. This system is, in, is able to get two, four video inputs, which, is, which are camera inputs, it also allows two network inputs, and uh, it has a DDR, which is a player system. DDR is the disc, digital disc recorder. It also allows, you can do graphics on this system, has two graphics. Also, this system has different virtual sets, which you can use in your, in, in your set when you are, use, you are doing your production. On this system, you can also be able to do your streaming live from this system using this point here. You can also grab a picture when you're using the same, same system. And it also has a, an audio mixer, which you can do when you're doing also your production from the same, same system. You can be able to control this machine either using the control surface from this point or using the virtual set using a mouse. You can the virtual control surface using your mouse. Like for an example, if I decide to use my control surface, for example, I want a, a, a virtual set one. I can also be able to return back using my mouse on the uh, the virtual control surface, like this. This machine also allows different transition delegates, like when you want to use the, 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 the DSK transition, like this one, and the FTB, the background, and you can also auto-take auto using this control surface, like this one. 
this is our playout system it's called X Playout, where our sh sh recorded shows and programs are scheduled for the airplay. From here, the signal comes to our encoder, which allows SDI inputs. Either live shows from our production system or recorded programs from our playout system comes all the way to our uh, encoder here which is connected to a decoder to the product to, to our uh, content distributors through fiber optic cable from our studio signal is linked to the content distributors either panafric which is star times and signet who now do the link the uplink of the signal to the satellite for the receiver and the viewers to get the signal yeah, today is my first time to go to the digital TV station. Yeah, and I've been able to learn so many things, like how the camera works, types of microphones, and the lighting system. Thereafter, we have gone to the production room. I've been shown how the news is edited, how the working condition the place is, and so many other things. Yeah, yeah there are some things uh, concerning con transmission how the waves are being transmitted to due to the digital migration yeah, and that is about it nashukuru sana kwa kufika hapa etv na vile tu tumeingia pale ndani kwa hiyo digital tv nini tume nimejua mambo mingi ambayo nilikuwa sijui ikiwemo hii mambo ya nani cameras kuna different type of cameras kuna different type of mics kama tumeamua kuna hiyo condenser na ile nyingine nimejua vitu vingi na pia kuhusu kwa hii mambo ya TV vile vile program inakuwa aired nimejua pia hiyo nashukuru sana na mengine mengi ambao pia siwezi kuyataja kwa sababu ni mengi ambao yani hayo ni baadhi ya vile ambavyo nimejua and today I've really learned a lot about aviation TV. First, I've learned concerning microphones. We have the condenser, we have the dynamic. Then we have taught about uh, visual and uh, audio part of it. Then we also learned about production part of it. And I've really learned a lot and I appreciate. Uh, in digital, digital te television stations, I've learned uh, a lot of many things uh, which are are very helpful to our studies as in I'm um, taking a, a diploma in mass communication journalism. So in digital TV stations I've learned uh, things such as uh, uh, how they are preparing news, uh, how the signals can reach the way, the way that we can just get the way the, 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 how the, 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 the channels we can reach, they can reach us. Uh, like here from we can as in, in, in uh, uh, ATV, we, from, we people from Mombasa, we can just get how the, we can reach them. So, uh, to be sincere, to be sincere, digital television stations have grown up, and uh, many Kenyans are just appreciating appreciating on how they can get news, they can be entertained. Yeah. That's all we had for you today on Digital TV Migration. See you next time on BizTech. I'm Magdalene Onjiro.